Hello, so that, today we will deal with heart failure and we will look at the causes of it. We can actually divide them into lifestyle and diseases. Lifestyle are those that you can actually um, make a difference at home. So please decrease your weight, do exercise, uh, eat a very healthy diet with a lot of fruits and vegetables, exercise more than five times a week, please at least five times a week, please at least half an hour each each occasion and make it intensive. So half an hour should be more than enough. If you exercise very intensively until you actually cannot move anymore, so you, for example, you do a lot of arm movements and you, you do a lot of leg movements and you do them until you are totally exhausted, that's a very effective exercise. So please don't con go to the gym and then look at other people and speak with other people that is not called exercise that's called socializing so please these two things that you need to do at home are very important eat a very healthy diet try to put a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruits into your diet eat normal food don't eat fast food these are just these are just uh, some examples that you can do. I will not go into the specific of which type of food is best, but I, I want to highlight that fruits and vegetables are the most important ones to consider when you're dealing with diet. The BMI should not be more than 25. BMI means that you divide your weight divided by your height in meter. So for example, if you're 1.6 meter large, then you take 1.6 times 1.6, and then you get a value and you take your weight divided by that. And I've made a, a, a table of three examples here. For example, if your w w height is 1.6, then your BMI uh, th then your weight should not be more than 64 kilogram. If you are 1.7 large then your weight should not be more than 72. If you're 1.8 large then you should not be more than 81 kilogram. These are just examples and it's very easy to calculate. So please if you're 1.7 then be under 72 kilograms. So that was obesity. So obesity is a very common risk factor for heart failure. Also what we have is heart disease. Heart disease can be for example coronary artery disease, we have ischemic heart disease, we have valve disease, we have uh, myocardial infarction, we have left ventricular hypertrophy and, and so on. Hypertension, so a very high amount of blood pressure is also very bad because we have seen that if you have a higher blood pressure than 140, so the, actually the average of heart failure patients is around 150 to 90. And you see that's not so high actually, uh, but when it comes to diseases, it's too high. So please be, be below 140 and be below 90 this diastolic so 140 90 please always be below this level and if you cannot reach that by lifestyle if you're too lazy if you're not going to the gym or you're not training enough if you're not eating healthy then you are then you need to take medication that's it that's it i'm just saying that because if the blood pressure is higher than 140 90 then you need to take blood pr blood pressure medications we need to reduce the risk of heart failure because you give, if you get heart failure, you will die. It's not a joke. And this is not a rare disease. One out of five people will get heart failure above 40 years of age. It's not, it's not a rare disease. Many people have heart failure. And therefore, you need to attack the things that you can attack at home, which is diet and exercise. Another thing, it has been shown that diabetes mellitus is also, please, please don't eat a lot of sugars, a lot of fat, you will get diabetes, if you get diabetes you will get heart failure. These are all connected diseases. So you need to have low blood pressure, you need to have a low sugar level in the blood, so no diabetes, you need to not be obese, so, so if you're one, six, uh, one meter six, uh, large 1.6 then you should not be a larger uh, you should not have a weight more than 64 and so on so the other thing that is very interesting is that socioeconomically that means how much money do you have in which region do you live that is also important and this this somehow seems to be uh, unrelated to diseases but it's not 
Money matters. Okay, I know that money is not everything, but money matters. If you have money, then you can buy high quality food, then you can have a lower stress of life. Of course, this is not always true. Uh, I'm not saying that if you have money, you have no stress. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you're not stressing out because of money, because of uh, not having any food on your table, because of not having enough money to uh, give to your children and stressing out all the day. So stress leads also to diseases. So please, if you have money, many things can be solved. You can get a better gym, you can get a personal trainer, you can buy uh, good quality food and so on, okay? I know that fruits and vegetables and all the healthy, healthy food costs more than very uh, cheap uh, colas or, or any, anything of uh, when we're dealing with fast food. All these are cheaper alternatives a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of fat and so on. And therefore, of course, money matters. And it has been seen that the more money you have, the less diseases uh, these patients have. Okay, so this is an interesting correlation. The same with cigarette smoking. Uh, please stop that. I know that many people do that. I know that this has been said one million times before that cigarette smoking is bad, but please, Please stop that. I know it's hard. You need to uh, psychologically be stable to be able to do uh, to, to leave uh, cigarette smoking because this is a social thing. So this is more psychology than uh, anything else. Of course, cigarette sm smoking has a lot of addictive physical um, components, but social thing. There are many people who are socially smoking and not not only because of the physical thing. So. You need to talk with psychologists, you need to talk with relatives, you need to somehow uh, smoke less and less every week. If you are smoking 20 this week, then smoke 19 next week, then smoke 18 the, the following week, and please reduce the smoking one by one, each week one less. And eventually you will reach three cigarettes a day, then two, then one, and hopefully zero. Of course, it's possible to stop completely. If you are smoking 20 today, you can stop tomorrow by smoking zero, but that's more unlikely because the, the motivation, the will has to be there and the pe people don't have uh, willpower always. Willpower is exhausted sometimes, you are stressed, you are, you are having problems uh, in your life and then you are trying to smoke to just relieve the tension. But please, if you smoke one less a week, you stick to a schedule or you go to a camp where you're not allowed to smoke, I don't know, whatever you do, please stop it. I'm not joking, please stop that, please stop any alcohol of course you can drink a little bit i'm just saying one two drinks or one two glass of wine but per day of course but if if you want to be really healthy then stop alcohol altogether if you are want to socialize to uh, uh, drink with people during an evening during a saturday of course it's fine it's it, it, you will not die you will not get disease of this i'm just saying that regular alcohol more than two drinks a day is very bad so stop alcohol stop any type of smoking stop any type of of bad eating behavior eating too much of sweetness i know sweet is very sweet so therefore it's very addictive also as smoking but please reduce all this thing and if you have a bmi now of less than 25 then you should be really satisfied with yourself that should be the goal so please calculate your bmi and put and, and put that as a goal in your life to get less than 25 and then you will get less of these heart diseases that i mentioned all the risk factors for heart failure that i said that was coronary artery disease myocardial infarction valve diseases dilated cardiomyopathy left ventricular hypertrophy all these are actually related somehow to lifestyle also hypertension, also diabetes mellitus and, uh, uh, and the socioeconomic stat status of yourself, which means how much money you have in your pocket is also important. But that's another, that's another video, how you can increase the wealth in your 
in your life. Good, I thank you very much for listening and I hope you will become more healthy and you will not get heart failure because heart failure is deadly and one out of five people will get that over 40 years of age and it's just increasing by age. So when we're dealing with patients who are more than 70 years of age or 80 years of age, then this is not one in five, it's maybe one in three and so on. It's, it, it increases with age. And if you want to live a very healthy and very long life, you want to become 80, 90, 100 years of age, then you need to be very healthy, have a very healthy lifestyle and consider that the best investment you can do in your life is to invest in your health. There's no other investment. There's no other smartphone or car or house, anything else that is not your body is not so important. Okay, all the fancy stuff that you're investing money is, is nothing compared to your body. Your body is the most important investment that you can do. If you look, if you look, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, wow, that's a nice looking body. That is, the, that is what you have to achieve. The proudness that you look into your mirror and you say, I'm so freaking good looking. I'm so healthy. I feel good. I have energy in my life. So good. Thank you very much for listening.